Hello and welcome to this week's RuneScape news, including quality of life changes, special tech changes, and more. So whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. For RuneScape guides, content, and news, be sure to subscribe. You may have already noticed, but the RuneScape winter theme is back, and oh boy does Snowy Elf City look good. There also seems to be a placeholder for an upcoming presence event in the Grand Exchange. Or in Sand Hat or Silver Party Hat, anyone? In December, you will also see the return of the Advent Calendar, which for those unaware, is an event in which you can claim predetermined gifts, of which one is added every single day. These gifts consist of pulse cores and XP boosters, protein items, skilling outfit pieces, and more. And this year, after opening 15 of these presents, you will get the portable Snowfall Oracle's Medic Override, which definitely fits the whole snowy theme of December. Nice. This week sees a major overhaul to the Dragon Weapon Special Tax, giving birth to new solid choices for your EOF, while improving others by removing cooldowns or increasing the hit cap. I'm not going to go into detail into all of them, but you can see a table on screen now showing you the new damage values and what has changed. That being said, I'd like to mention a couple of things in specific I found interesting. The Dragon Halberd seems to be quite an interesting little spammy weapon for Slayer tasks, although the Dragon Two-Handed Sword is the real AoE MVP. Using a Scythe at the cost of 50% adrenaline without any reductions, you can get a 290% average ability damage hit in a 7x7 area. This will quite literally delete most enemies off your screen in a lot of areas. This is going to be fantastic for clearing elite dungeons, for doing Slayer, and perhaps it might even be the new meta for Shattered Worlds. Only if you ever need to farm some more reputation in the heart of Gilanor, well the Dragon Two-Hander just made it incredibly easy as long as you bring a combat dummy to keep hitting the middle. This weapon special tank deserves some more testing in its own detailed video. Also worth pointing out is that the Dragon Longsword now features a raised hit cap and does more maximum ability damage at 410%. Thanks to these changes, you'll be able to hit over 30,000 in actual PVM using the Chaos Roar ability. Now I couldn't tell you which of these buffed specs is best, at least not currently, but these new specs do seem like a lot of fun to play around with. More to come on this channel. Let's continue with the other general patches. In terms of general patches, gold books can now be charged up to 24 hours in total, meaning you no longer need to refill your gold books every now and then. Gold book tooltips have also seen an update to better emphasize their effects. Crystal tools received a similar treatment. You will now use a charge when gaining the effects from the scripture of Bic, and you will no longer be able to flick it without using charges. Desert, Ice, and Jungle Strike Worms no longer require Slayer Task to attack and kill. When placing Elves and Nihils in your player-owned Slayer dungeon, at least when newly placing them, they will consistently spawn as their captured variant. So if you place a Shadow Nihil, it should respawn as a Shadow Nihil every single time. Perhaps this will give birth to some new AFK able methods. Super Guffix restores no longer provide the adrenaline buff, which also means that they will no longer put your adrenaline potion on cooldown when used. Since Super Guffix restores do not drain your stats, I wouldn't be surprised if they start to be used more commonly from now on. There is a new item available from the Traveling Merchant known as the Horn of Honor, which can be redeemed for Barbarian Assault Honor Points. The lighting in the Dungeon Disorder has been fixed, and the lighting in the Polypore Dungeon has been improved for better visibility. Finally, there's also a new Master Quest Cape achievement called the Collection of Zamorakian Notes, and is worth 10 rune score. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't make a video on the login issues that occurred last week for both Old School and RuneScape 3 players, locking them out of the servers and game for about 24 hours, it's because I'm waiting for Jagex to announce their make good options or compensation for that one day of outage. Now I do not suspect that the compensation will amount to anything grand, but who knows? Jagex might surprise us. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.